Welcome people of the internet, my name is Talent, and today guys, I'm going to be doing a bit of a surprise review. I was not expecting to get this in the mail today. It's the Super 7 Godzilla Minus 1. I was not expecting to get this in the mail today, as I already said. So, it's a bit of an unpredicted, unpredictable review. Without further ado, let's get right into this guy. Okay, so we just got the guy out of the box, and this guy was a pain to get out of the box. Before we get into the in-depth review, I want to do a disclaimer when unboxing this guy. So, so, when I was unboxing this guy, I didn't realize that the spines, these two spines right here, were right about, here, hold on. We're right about right here. As you can see, I had to cut. I tried to pull them out, but then I didn't realize that the, the spikes were up there. So I started to pull, and I was scared I was going to break it. I luckily did not break it. Just when you are unboxing this guy, just please be careful about making sure these spines right here are fully out and not about to break. I would recommend cutting to the spines because that's probably the safest option. So... Just a little bit of disclaimer before we get into the review. Also, before we get into the review, I do want to preface that this tail was a pain to get on. When I was trying to plug in the tail, there was, it, like, not this part right here to plug it in. It's just this part. The connector right here had a lot of excess plastic inside. So, if there's some excess plastic in your figure, remove it with, like, tweezers or something. I didn't have to, like, cut anything out. Just excess plastic. Just a disclaimer let's get to the actual review so first thing we're going to be going over is paint and detail now with the sh monster arts it was pretty detailed but i did not buy it i was planning to but when i saw this guy get announced last year i'm like you know what we're gonna get this guy this guy looks so much better and so i pre-ordered it and now it is here Let's go over paint and detail. Um, I want to start the head because this is kind of like the only color that's not like gray, charcoal, brown. Uh, so the only sign of like other colors from gray and brown are the head. The eyes are like a orange, an orange, a yellow, and a black. Both eyes are painted on pretty well. If we, yeah, pretty well. And then the teeth are a just a basic white, and the gums are just a basic uh, pink. So for the whole body, it's just a mix of like browns, blacks. I'm pretty sure charcoal. I don't know what like I'm gonna guess this is like this like brownish color is like a greenish brown. I don't know my colors, but yeah, that's kind of like the only sort of like color throughout the figure. I do really like this like color for a Godzilla instead of like the basic charcoal and white dorsal spines. This is like the only like design that kind of differed from doing charcoal and white for the spines and then charcoal for the body. Now that's kind of all there is for paint and detail. Uh, the interchangeable head is the exact same as the regular head but just in a roaring face. Um, well, we will get into this little guy later. Now let's go over articulation. So there is a ball joint at the head right here. Um, it can move down about that far without moving the neck. It can look up that far without moving the neck up. And But if we use both parts when looking down, it can move about down that far. And then it can also look up that far so you can recreate the pose from the trailer so now we go on to the chest area right here it can swivel like that it can go from side to side and it could move down about that far down which is not bad for a godzilla figure and but it can also arch that far back and it could look up pretty far if we use all three parts so yeah now when moving down to the arms right here there is a there is a hinge joint here at the hand it is very tight and these are very very sharp 
there's also another hinge joint right here. Uh, it also gets blocked by this part right here, so you can go up that far up. Do a nice elbow crunch, jeez. And then there's also not a like a ball joint, like another hinge joint here. It's only a swivel here. And there's also a ball joint right here, which allows for a full 360. And when we are coming down to the legs right here, those thunder thighs, as Choppy the Han would call it, there is a bit of a limited spread right here. It's not that good of a spread. That's okay. Um, there is a th uh, calf. Well, not a thigh swivel a little bit. Not that far. It can go back about that far. It can go front about that far. I don't want to force it. But then right here at the knee, there is a knee joint, which can go down and go up about that far. There is also a, I don't know what kind of joint this is. There's a hinge joint right here at the foot. I have no idea what that's called. Um, it can, it kind of like when you try and bend it, it goes at like an angle for some reason. I have no clue. And you can kind of fake a pivot, kind of like that, which is okay. And then we come to the standard for every single Godzilla figure, which is a great poseable tail. And I think this guy definitely goes in both directions, a poseable and non-poseable tail. It's a nice tail, but not as articulated as SH Monster. Ah. Besides that, the, this is a very nice tail, and it could go about that far, that far that way, and get a very nice curvaceous movements. And when it's standing up, it can do a very nice way like that. It's not a good position. There we go. So that kind of covers it for articulation. So let's go on to accessories. As you can see, I did get the uh, interchangeable head on and it looks very nice. It looks like the exact same figure, but with just an open mouth. But I don't know why Super 7 couldn't engineer a hinge joint at the mouth. I know there is, thank you, Kajita Canuck that there is like a rumor going around that they are testing like hinge like joints at the mouth. I'm pretty sure Kaiju Canuck told me that. I'm pretty sure I watch a lot I watch a lot of Kaiju Canuck so I know what's going on in the Super 7 world. Um, but it is reported like they are doing like hinges at the jaw, which I feel like they should have done for this figure, but that's okay. One thing that's not about the jaw is about what's in the mouth. There is no movable tongue, so Jabby the Hong cannot go. Sadly, Jabby the Hong cannot do that with this figure, but that's okay. That's just a minor critique. A movable tongue doesn't have to make a figure good, but I feel like there should be a hinge joint here, but that's okay. Now, seeing as this guy is really, really big, I can't do size comparisons like this. This guy will hit the back of the table. So we're just gonna do them like this. Here is the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1972, and this guy towers over him. Here is the SH Monster Arts Gamera 1999. I don't know if you guys remember these, but like these are the massive Godzillas <laughs> from Bandai America. I got this guy around 2014, and geez, this guy is humongous. But this guy is giant too. This guy is still bigger, but this is like the kind of like the roughest size estimate that I have to a King series because I don't actually have any Bandai King series. Despite all my complaints with this figure, this guy is still a great addition to your collection. I highly recommend picking this guy up. With all of my complaints about the unboxing and then the tail getting on and the no hinge joint in the jaw, I feel like this is still a great figure. But that's kind of all my thoughts. I feel like. This is a great figure to add to your collection, like I already said. And yeah, I'm gonna give this guy a 4.5 out of five. But make sure you guys do like and subscribe. And if any YouTubers are watching this, please let me know if you guys have any questions about this figure. I will leave my Discord profile in the description. So yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace.